In this video, I'll be talking about the debugs that I have here off of my voice gateway, which I collected for the same call flow that I did in my previous video, which is phone A using SIP to communicate with CUCM, and CUCM uses SIP to communicate with this voice gateway, which is then using PRIs and time division multiplexing, also known as TDM, to communicate with the telco. Phone B eventually starts to ring, which then uses these legacy protocols to send the ringing back to the voice gateway, which use it be, because we're not doing like a SIP signaling here on this side of it, we're not going to be doing a, like a, a SIP message where it's, you know, 180, Hey, uh, please go ahead and ring. It's actually going to be media that is determining that the ringing should occur. And on these PRIs, it will actually be digitized when it comes in. So then we have a SIP 183 session progress sent back to CUCM and CUCM converts that 183 session progress to a 180 ringing. And the reason I'm talking about this is because in my previous video, Robert commented, could you show us in the logs where CUCM converts the 183 session to a 180 ringing? So we'll go ahead and do that now. Jumping into the CUCM logs here, we can see the incoming 183 session progress from the SIP gateway. And we also see that it has the SDP of the gateway, basically letting us know where to send the media if we open up the early media path. But looking here, we can see that the rel one xx config is set to zero. And if we were to jump over to the CUCM itself, we can see here on the SIP profile, that is in use by the SIP trunk to the RTP gateway, that SIP rel 1xx options is disabled. So that's why the config there is set to zero. And when we, that's also why the CUCM didn't reply to the, to the 183 session progress that we got from the gateway. So if we go down a little bit further where all of the SDP is being parsed out, that whole SIP message is being parsed out, we can see that the SIP CDPC, which is associated with the SIP gateway side of the call, is reaching out to route list control with a CC alert indication. That is then passed on from route list control to route list CDRC. Route list CDRC then passes it on to call control right down here on this line. We should later see the call control start engaging the other side of this phone call. I'll mark that as purple. I guess I did remove by accident. So when we scroll down here, we can see call control reaching out to call dependent call control, which what we we've, we've talked about this in previous videos where we mentioned that this is one of the overarching processes that controls both sides of the call. It's kind of the puppet master. And then CDCC reaches out to line control for a CC alert request. And you can see that this line control, I bet you if we went looking into the traces a little more, this is going to be the line control that's associated with the line on phone A. In fact, this MAC address, let's see if this is over here in this document. It is. So this is for phone A. So with that said, we now see that we're coming down the other side of the ladder. Essentially, you know, we worked our way all the way up to call dependent call control. And now we're working our way back down from call dependent call control down to phone A. And now we see that line control reaches out to line CDPC. Line CDPC reaches out to station D. This is also going to be associated with phone A side. Station D then reaches out to station CDFC. And station CDFC is now reaching out to both station D saying, hey, wait. And station, it, it's also reaching out to SIP CDPC saying, hey, your new status is in call proceeding. Now, what's going to happen down here is we're going to see CDPC Right. This is going to be the first message in this series of messages here. And it's basically going to start saying, hey, we need to 
we need to create a SIP message. And that SIP alert request, right here, SIP CDPC is reaching out to SIP handler with that SIP alert request. And in all of this series of messages here, that's the SIP stack being built out to be the 180 response, which is going to go to the transport layer. All right. So now you see SIP handler, which is the um, the process for SIP on CUCM, which interfaces with the outside world. So whenever CUCM wants to talk to a SIP phone or a SIP trunk, SIP handler is going to be the process that communicates with um, you know, SIP station D and SIP TCP. All right, so right here, we are, we are about to send that SIP signal. And right here, that's where you see it. The 180 ringing is being sent out to the phone A. So that's how the 183 is getting converted over to a 180 ringing. And now with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and start talking more about the gate, the debugs on the gateway. In the file here, gateway debugs, you can see that the first thing I did was I turned off all of the debugs to make sure that there's nothing in my way. I enabled debug VoIP copy and out, debug CC SIP messages, and debug ISDN Q931. Then I cleared the log. I placed the test call. I turned on term length zero so I don't have to continue to hit more. It just prints everything out right away as soon as I do show log. And here I did the show log to get all of my output. So due to the SIP, CC SIP messages being enabled, we're able to see the SIP invite come in. I'll go ahead and I'll highlight that SIP call ID. And with that SIP call ID in coming in, we can see the call control API, CC API, which is what most people call it. And we see the ANI, which is the automatic number identification. I'll go ahead and highlight that. That's going to be our calling number. ANI is always the calling number. And we see the destination here as well. So I'll highlight that as a second style token. And scrolling down a little bit more, we see the CAPI debug still, and we have our incoming dial peer here, which is something that we noted in our previous video. I'll do that with a third style token. If we wanted to look at all the CAPI messages, we could search on this here. So I'll do find all in current document. And then down here, we would see all the different CAPI messages. So let's take a look at, let's say, Right here, call setup indication common. We should see our outbound dial peer somewhere around here. It looks like it's a little bit lower. Right here is our outgoing dial peer. And that looks like it was on the CC call setup request. Let's see right here, CC call setup request. And we have our outgoing dial peer marked up here now. We'll do style token four for that. And we could scroll down more to see things like where the alert is occurring. That's going to basically mean that there's a, a ringing going on. We can see that the conference creates going on, which is somebody actually is answering the call. And now you can see the call is connected. You also see some capabilities uh, indication and some capabilities ACK. You can see here the payload types that are associated, things of that nature. And eventually the call is going to be hung up. We can see that there was an event here and we're seeing these disconnects come in. These are actually getting into the ISDN debugs though. But you can see also in the CAPI down here that the call is being torn down and the call is being disconnected and then the disconnect is done. So at a really high level, if you searched on that, um, this, this unique key right here, you'll be able to see all the CAPI debugs. Let's go ahead and start looking at the ISDN debugs now. The first thing that needs to happen is the call needs to be received on the gateway and the gateway needs to do the processing of it. And then once it matches an outbound dial peer, which we can see here that it did, after that, we'll see that it's going to send a setup message and that setup message is right here, TX setup. So we're transmitting a setup and the call reference is this right here. So I will go ahead and uh, do a style token on that one. 
we'll we'll remove the other style tokens right now actually remove style token clear all style tokens and we'll highlight this here we'll make that one style token two since it's going out the second leg of the call and very quickly we get back we're going to receive a call proceeding right here we can go up here to this uh, call reference and it should increment by eight which we see that it does here and then we'll have these two different ones style token we'll do second we'll have the 008 alpha and the 808 alpha moving forward for us to to take a look at and i'll do control f on this then we'll copy it and I'll put an or statement. Then we'll add an eight here and we'll change that to be a regular expression saying, I want to look for this or this find all in current document. And for here, we can see that there's a setup message that's sent out. We can see a call proceeding that comes back, then the alerting and the connect connect act. Then we're going to receive a disconnect. And we're going to send out a release and then we get a release complete letting us know that the call is completed so as you can see here the the messages that are being sent are going to be 0x008 alpha so i'll just say 008 alpha but what we receive is going to be 808 alpha so this particular number right here is going to increment by eight whatever is on the tx will get turned to an eight on this particular number. And then that's it for the um, ISDN Q931 in terms of seeing the messages that are going out and coming in. You can see the channel that is it's going in and out on. You can see the calling number and the called number. You can see the plan and type, which I have them both set to unknown. That's something that you can change in call manager or you can change on the gateway as well. And moving down, we just walk right all the way through it, all the way down to the end, and we can see the uh, coming coming in and going out messages. As far as the CC SIP messages goes, what we were talking about on the CUCM side, everything that we've done in the videos up to now can be applied here as well. Style token, say first, control F, find all in current document, and we'll see the invite, the 180, the 100 trying going back to the CUCM, the 183 session progress going back to the CUCM. And then we send back a 200 OK. That 200 OK is due to the other person on the far end answering the call. So we, we receive a connect, we act the connect, and then the voice gateway tells call manager, hey, we have a 200 OK. The call should be connected now. And that's the gist of it for these debugs in terms of the ISDN Q931, the CAPI in out, and the CC SIP messages. I'll go ahead and end this one here. I hope that you got some value out of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.